It's the biggest game of the year. With less than a minute to go and down by five, the quarterback gets sacked. He limps off the field. I guess that means the game is over. No, wait. The backup quarterback comes in, hikes the ball, dodges the lineman, and runs it in for the game-winning touchdown. Good thing there was a backup quarterback to save the day. Unfortunate and unforeseen events happen. And when they do, it's good to have a backup plan, especially when it comes to your wireless network. Businesses rely on a consistent wireless connection. They can't be productive without it. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll show you how to use VRRP and VRID for management and failover on a Cisco business wireless device. First, I'll explain how failover of the primary AP works in Cisco Business Wireless. All Cisco Business Wireless, or CBW, management is done through the access point holding the primary AP role. All access points and mesh extenders must maintain communication with the primary AP. CBW uses Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol, or VRRP, for redundancy and failover of the primary AP. This VRRP protocol is defined in RFC 3768. Originally intended to provide routing redundancy via multiple gateways, VRRP has been repurposed for CBW to provide a consistent virtual address for management, as well as redundancy of the primary AP. If the primary AP becomes unreachable, another primary capable AP will take over the role automatically. This will occur only if more than one primary capable AP is present on the network. Primary capable APs are the CBW140AC, CBW145AC, and CBW240AC. VRRP creates a virtual device which can run on any of the primary capable APs present on the network. In this scenario, instead of a virtual router, VRRP provides a virtual controller. If the primary AP changes, management functionality is still reached through the same IP address and MAC address, which move with the virtual device. The MAC address of the virtual device takes the following form as defined in RFC 3768. The default virtual MAC address is 00-00-5E-00-01-01. Now I'll discuss the potential problem and solution. In the event that a device is already running in VRRP for routing redundancy with a VRID set to one, the CBW device with the same VRID will cause conflict with the MAC address. If we don't want to change the routing VRID, then the CBW's VRID can be changed. Following that, I can change the VRID by navigating to Expert View. Then go to Wireless Settings and select the access point and click Edit. Under the Primary tab, I can set the VRID. For example, if I'm configuring the VRID value as 10, then the virtual MAC address will change accordingly. The MAC address will be 00-00-5E-00-01-01. So I'll check on the AP how I can change the VRID. I'll log in to the Cisco Business Wireless Access Point. Then I'll switch to Expert View by clicking on the Switch Expert View icon. I'll click on OK. Now I'm in Expert View. I'll click on Wireless Settings and then I'll click on the Access Points. I'll select the primary AP and click on Edit. Next, on the pop-up, I will click Yes to proceed. Now, under the Primary AP tab, I can see that VRID is configured as 1. I can change this parameter and I can only configure the VRID from 1 to 255, as that is the valid range. Then, I can change the value to 2 and click on Apply to save the settings. Please know that VRID can only be changed after the initial setup. This means that the initial setup cannot be done in the same VLAN as an existing VRRP installation that uses VRID1. In that case, the setup may have to be done in a certain area first. 
It's always good to have a backup plan for all situations. And now my wireless network can handle the unexpected. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.